you know, because there's opportunities that come along all the time that I can yeah, handle I mean, like, on my own. Yeah, but, I mean, like pick up that homeless guy. It's like, okay, well, literally all I have to do is pull over, give him a ride. And that's not, that could be a God opportunity. It doesn't have to be, he's not a giant. I mean, unless yeah. he pulls a knife on me, then then it's a giant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I got married, I used to pick up people. Um, God's opportunity often requires giants. What else? I think it's um, two visions. You know, Christians are not, let me hit them up with, um, yeah. with, with Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which is, Christianity offers a second type of seeing or second. Uh, let's just say it. I'll be clever. Second set of eyes. <clears throat> and then we'll just let the guys talk. I mean, this is about them. Well, you also have the, the story with uh, Elisha and his, and his servant. Oh, I love that story. Can we, can we, we have time. Can we find that? Yeah. Honestly, 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 nothing's wrong at work. I'm just tired and it's overwhelming. All right, what is that scripture? You're looking it up. Yeah, I'll get it for you. Okay, hey, Zai. Second Kings six seventeen. Okay, beat me to it. Oh, I almost, I almost caught you. Cool. Uh, what? Uh, we should give him a little bit of the context, maybe not the whole thing, but we should yeah. give him a little bit. Uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the accent. That's cool. Cool story, by the way. That's actually yeah. at work, too. That's a work story, by the way. Um, I love this so much. Didn't Robert though? Didn't, what did um didn't Pastor Robert just give this story? No. Huh? No, he he no. no. Okay. I've just heard it from somebody. Wonder who that was. Anyway, how much of it do you <coughs> how much of it do you want to read? <laughs> um, like where should I start we can just yeah towards the end towards yeah. the end summarize the beginning the beginning yeah, is the, the the king is mad because you know Elisha knows what he's saying in, his, in the presence of his council and so they go every time they go try to trap him you know, he knows in advance, you know, remember, you remember that? You're looking yeah, at me totally. like I'm weird. Okay. Right, totally know. And so then they come to get him. Obviously he knows, but the servant's scared. So. But. Yeah. I love it. Love it. No, it's actually a great story. I don't want to know that. I, I can't keep saying everything's my favorite, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's a beloved story of mine for sure. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, um, Let's go back to this piece of crap application. So we're going to start with uh, Joshua here. So scripture, what was it? Uh, Numbers, Numbers 13. 13. Okay. And then we'll talk, 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 blah, blah, blah. And then um, we'll do these two scriptures. I'll do this one. You have a lot more scripture than me tonight. So I hope that's okay. Come on. Uh, I prayed this one last night, so I may share an anecdote about me um, in my work right now, if I feel like it. So this will be your scripture. You'll go second. And it's second Kings six, somewhere around 15, 15 to, yeah. 15 to um, 21 is kind of what it looks like to me. Harley, go sit down. Go sit down. Go on. You're not coming in here. All right. And then for, um, we'll have to think about podcasts as far as flipping this over. Um, but I think there are good correlations of, you know, you're interpreting something as a big problem, but it could be a big opportunity. And I think there's some good flips about mindset that we can 
you can bring in no doubt about it um yeah i think i think sometimes when you just we don't apologize for it yeah I this is our perspective on on this yeah if you're listening to the howie and beast run we happen to have a faith perspective so yeah and i don't think we have to point it true. out yeah i don't think we have to draw attention to it yeah you can just say when there's giants in in my life this is what i go to this is yeah. what encourages me to stand against it yeah it's knowing that they're supposed to be there and and the, and the giants don't belong to me that's not my battle yeah that's my good. battle is to show up yep i like it sounds good uh if we have time you could also say um You know, if we want to, if we get if we get around to it. I mean, you remember a couple times. There's, I think three, <clears throat> where I mean, you had some solid insights during my time off. You know, yeah. it's like I mean, what if I wouldn't have shared? You know, yeah. I mean, it's true. Iron sharpens iron. I mean, I know we hit that a little too much, but yeah. anyway. But it's a thought. I mean, if you have a giant opportunity, I mean, it's good to get your friend's advice as well. So we'll see if we get around to that. All right. Well, do you want to let him in or is anybody waiting yet? Dustin's sitting there. Oh, is he in? Okay. He's sitting there. I haven't let him in yet. Sure. Maybe the second set of eyes. Um, the you can use it. Yeah, you can use a New Testament one. Okay. The scripture, the scripture where John recognized Jesus on the shore. Okay. Does that does that fit? How, how, how does it fit from your? I mean, it probably does. Like, I'm, I'm not seeing it, but how, how? What do you think? Well, I'm open Pete, to Peter didn't recognize Jesus, and John did. <clears throat> and then John recognized that it was Jesus who told them to. to Cast the cast the net again, but maybe that's that's doesn't pushing feel, yeah. pushing it. Doesn't feel close enough to me, but I mean, feel free if you can make it work. Rock on. I'm just trying to think of a scripture <clears throat> other than the one that we do every three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, this is good. Not even just believing friends, just friends can offer a perspective. Just yeah. anybody. I mean, believing friends are great, but people who are friends in general can too. Well, that, I mean, that's where the perspective can come in, you know, because the, the 10 spies, they had a perspective, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, but Joshua had a different one. Hmm. Interesting. He gave me some thoughts, but I'll share it in the group. Yep. What's up, Dustin? Is your power out? No, I'm just outside on the patio. Okay. How's yeah, the I, need to, I need to string some some lights up here. Oh, that'd be nice. I've seen that look. It's a good look. <laughs> yeah. Are you working out there or just doing No, no, I just or? no, I just like to come out here when I can. Because yeah. kids are running, kids are running around, and the wife's in there and stuff. So I try to kind of get secluded for a little bit. Kind of have your own space for a minute. Yeah, how's she's how's Lucy. She's doing good. Doing good. Doing a little bit better. Not as <clears throat> sick as she normally is. So getting getting better. Good. That's good. <clears throat> <clears throat> Very good. When's she do? Uh, she's only like 13 weeks right now. Okay. 
So she's far off. Uh, probably the end of August is what we think. End of August, early September. It's incredible. Yep. Be here before you know it. Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, Jessica. Hello, good evening. It's good to see you. There he is. <laughs> What's up, Dennis? Hey, Ron, how are you? <laughs> we are just living the dream. Excellent. So how, how much uh, stuff did you already sell, Brian? Uh, four or five deals. Oh, that's good. Yeah, is it is it considered good or um, I'm, I'm not um, sure. It's... We're probably my region is probably at around ten percent right now, so our quarter ends the end of April, so we do have a long way to go. We've got a big deal with a gaming company, like a video game company, a huge deal that we're banking on. Um, so I in no way feel like I have a handle on the business yet. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do is get a real handle on, on the business. Um, but I'm optimistic and it's a huge, you know, it's a big number and it's a big year, but um, I'm building some plans to go after it for sure. And then, um, and what I learned during the job search, it's funny. I funny, it's funny. I learned about sales during the job search as much or more than I've learned in other ways. Because what I learned in the job search is I have to have a plan and creativity and have to be relentless and I can't judge the future because I, it could turn around in five seconds, which it, it, That's which true. it, it did. Yeah. I mean, the next opportunity could be literally the one. So I'm building plans, trying to have that grit and that optimism. So what do you actually sell? It is managed cybersecurity monitoring. So for companies that are generally a couple hundred employees or bigger, uh, all the way up to big, big companies, we will monitor for threats 24 by seven with a combination of endpoint technology that streams data into a cloud analysis platform. And it does all kinds of processing on threat processing in the cloud. And then we have um, 24 by seven, actually we have security experts who look at those threats and they they give human validation to those threats so it's a it's a critical critical technology for people because everybody really if you're a business with a couple hundred employees or, or bigger um you know you really have to be monitoring your cybersecurity because you could be out of business in one day i mean they all they have to That's do is true. Somebody clicks on your stuff, locks up all your computers. They want $20 million to unlock your computers and you can't pay. You're out of business mercilessly. And the thing is, I, I get to see threat information every day. And I mean, I saw today like a seven company, a seven person company hacked. I saw mm -hmm. a 30 person company hacked. I mean, we get like all these threats. And then what happens is people come to us and basically you know, get us to help them. So yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Do you, do you use it yourself? I mean, like the, the, does your company use your own solution? Um, I've never asked that, but I would assume so. Uh, the, the reason why I'm smiling is uh, you've just reminded me kind of the discussion we had yesterday. We have just purchased a company. The company uh, is known for uh, doing an anti-fraud software. And it actually kind of like acquired the $120 million venture capital. And we bought it out of bankruptcy. And the reason for the bankruptcy, guess what? Fraud. Oh, wow. So the, the company has been developing the anti-fraud mm -hmm. software for like five years. And it went down because of fraud. 
That's insane. Which is like very ironical, very ironical. Yeah. Wow. So, but yeah, it's an mm-hmm. unpredictable world. That's a really weird ir- irony for sure. Well, um, Dennis, will you open us up in prayer? Uh, sure. Lord, we are grateful for this opportunity to uh, be uh, tonight uh, together and uh, give us uh, the, the wisdom to learn from each other and uh, to, to teach each other. Uh, let us uh, be uh, a guidance, uh, provide, uh, provide guidance and uh, provide insights for each other's life and uh, let, uh, let your presence be, be among us. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Well, Jordan, what uh, what's the topic for tonight, my friend? It was your idea, so it'd be really nice if you could just kind of kick it off for us. Yeah, so last time we, we discussed discovering new opportunities and kind of what that looks like. Uh, what does the new opportunity look like? opportunity look like? Um, and oftentimes they did not look like an opportunity in the time, but it was. And so our topic today is giant opportunities. And so oftentimes when you're traveling with God and you're, you're in sync with him, his opportunities for us are giant opportunities. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's things that are hard, you know? We, we, um, things that are worth your time that are profitable or that are good for your business or your or good for your career or good for your family. I mean, sometimes those things are, are hard. And, you know, Jordan B. Peterson talks about opportunity exists where responsibility is abdicated. So when somebody else keeps walking by that big problem and you decide to tackle that big problem, then you just created an opportunity. But the, the thing is, it's still a big problem, you know? And I think God does lead us into situations that will stretch us. Um, you know, my current, my brand new job is, uh, is great. And it's a wonderful bunch of people, but it's a stretch for sure. And I think, you know, many new things are. So Giant Opportunities is a cool, um, cool title. Uh, we do have some scripture to kind of kick this off. And we actually have scriptures throughout. Um, but as we always do, we'll share a scripture and then we'll talk about uh, the different bullets and you guys can go into any direction that helps you guys for where you are, where you're at right now, nothing's off the table. Uh, but I think Jordan's going to start off with numbers 13. Uh, is that big enough? Yeah. Do we want to take a moment and just, uh, can we welcome everybody in? So Paul yeah. is back. So great to see you, Jessica, uh, Leslie, who else? So welcome. Good to see, good to have everybody. Thank you for being here. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for having us. Yeah. Um, all right. So numbers 13. Yeah, let me flip to that for us. Here we go. All right. So this is the we're not going to read the entire chapter, but this is the story of when the children of Israel, they're getting ready to go into uh, the promised land. Um, God tells Moses to tell them to send out 12 spies. So they're sending 12 spies into the land. And then this is their report when they come back. Okay. So we're starting in verse 27 of Numbers 13. It says, this was their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent us to explore. And it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. But the people living there are powerful, and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of the Anak. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. Um, I got a point that I'm going to make about that. Uh, verse 30 in a second. Uh-oh. Can you switch them back? Yeah, let me finish reading okay. that. Yep, cool. Good. Uh, but the other men who, 
who had explored the land with him disagree. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So, so they spread a bad report. Um, uh, and then at the very end, verse 33 says, next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought too. Um, so verse so my, my first point, if you want to go back, Howie, yep, yep, cool. um, is God's opportunity often, which is Howie's input, often requires giants. Um, and, it, you know, throughout scripture, there's, there's territories that God wants to take um, individuals into, but it required, it's through an obstacle. And maybe it's not physically called a giant, Um it's maybe it's called something else in that moment, but it's there's an obstacle that seems to be too great. Um, and it should be a, a sign that we're with God. It's my that's my point, that's my perspective on this is that uh, is that God not give us an opportunity to send to a promised land that doesn't require Him, it doesn't require the faith, it doesn't require His friendship, His um his accountability with us um and i wanted to point out that verse 30 um is uh and i know that i was guilty of this until I, it was pointed out to me and i kind of thought about it but in verse 30 you know uh caleb acknowledges he acknowledges that that there are giants there but let's go conquer it you know often i think whenever i thought of this story you almost think that Caleb and Joshua just are, uh, they don't, it's not, it's almost like they don't see the giants. Like all we see is the fruit. Let's go take the fruit. But that's not Caleb saying there are giants there, but let's go conquer it. And so my point is really twofold that I can't look at opportunities where there are giants and only see the fruit. If I only saw the fruit, then I'm, then I'm not acknowledging the giants. I, now I'm really disassociating from God and I'm just trying to look at the glass half full. Um, but I need to acknowledge the giants. They're there for a reason. Um, but again, the giant, it, I don't want to overstep Howie, but the giants is not my battle. So that's God's battle. But I need to acknowledge that they're there so that whenever God defeats the giants, whatever they are in my business or whatever they are in my life, I can acknowledge that he defeated us. So. Amen. Um, Dustin, what would you add to, to that as far as, you know, finding opportunities that are, you know, giants, um, you know, in, in life and in career and in, in um, family, you know, anything, what would you add to right. your thoughts? Uh, well, the first thing that, you know, reading, reading that scripture, one of the things that, point out and and there's a uh, something this morning i was listening to uh was a power of, of words you know how how many times did it say that um they were afraid or they saw how how large the enemies are but yet caleb said we can do this we can take this look at the power of their words and if you truly believe you know we're talking about small businesses entrepreneurs you know others work for other companies what are you saying uh to yourself um about who you are or whose you are um, through these processes. And I think that's so important about, you know, the words that uh, we speak in our lives because they have power. Good. Yeah, I mean, the same crew, right? 10 spies said bad things. And right. two spies said good things. I mean, it's, I'm sure they all had some anxiety. I mean, it would be weird if literally Joshua and Caleb felt nothing. That would seem like they're out of touch, so they're not very intelligent, right? I think you have to be intelligent enough to, to see that, you know, <laughs> there's a problem in my life, or there's a, there's a giant in my life, or there's a giant in my business, or whatever. I think it's like someone who is, no intelligence at all wouldn't even know there's a problem so it's like i think caleb and joshua were probably not stupid like they probably could see they were giants and they know a giant can kill you <laughs> you know what i mean 
So the words that came out of the mouth, to your point, um, were it's almost like that. One, some people made a decision to speak one way, and some made a decision to speak another way. Right, and and also too, um, you got to think about, you know, what's bigger? Is it your problem, or or God? You know, who's who's bigger? And obviously, Caleb believed that his God was bigger than his problem. That's good. Can I read the follow up in the yeah. next chapter? Sure. We didn't we didn't talk about this, but no, that's I good. Pulled... Do, you to, do you want me to click uh, next? Uh, you can. I pulled it up, but it doesn't matter. So everybody else can see it. It's verse seven. Okay. So the people are rebelling. They're telling, you know, hey, let's kill Moses and Aaron. Let's appoint somebody else. And this is what Caleb says. The land we pass through to spy out is exceedingly good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us. A land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord. And do not fear the people of land, for they will be our prey. Their tax is gone, and not to fear them. Um, and then, so it's it's a, it's what Dustin's talking about. It, they're acknowledging there's giants, but the only way they're going to defeat it is if God does something. Hmm. Does anybody have any giants right now? Leslie, you're nodding yes. Well, oh, I, I was nodding. I guess I didn't realize. Um, I think we all have giants. <laughs> <laughs> but I think looking at Caleb and Joshua, it was a, a more of a perspective because they were all warriors that went in there. So why would, you know, all the rest be afraid, but not them? I think they were more like a valiant warrior. So they were like, just shut up, people. Let's just go and get this done because that's pretty much what he said. Um, you know, so it's quite interesting because that's our mindset right now. You just wrote a uh, mindset. That's our mindset. Sometimes, sometimes we are fearful, right? Cause of what we see, uh, when it's already been given to us. And it's just a matter of, um, you know, every time we think of di- giants, we think of David too. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I think mm-hmm. before we get to the giant, we have to battle the lions and bears. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the times people just don't even battle with lions and bears because they're still so afraid. So when the giant comes, they're like, forget it, we're done, you know? So yeah, we all have giants. It's just, uh, <laughs> they're different sizes of giants. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. That's great insight. Interesting. I never thought about, you know, if David would have just been, you know, instead of trusting God and tackling the problem in front of him, which was a lion and a bear, you know, if he wouldn't have tackled those, then he probably would not have been ready to face the giant. That's a good insight. Interesting. So maybe when we do have these challenges, you know, but maybe at the time, maybe that felt like a giant, like a lion is pretty scary. So if you saw, you know, if we take it in the order of the story, the lion was first and then the bear. I mean, just for fun, we'll act like it's in that order. Um, at the time, that was his giant, you know, and then a bear. I mean, that's bigger. And then, you know, Goliath is bigger and it's a human, a trained human. Um, So maybe there's a progression there. But if he didn't take on, to your point, the smaller giants, then he wouldn't be ready for the for the big giants. That's interesting. That's true. That's good. Dennis. I actually don't have much to add here, so... Sure. Okay. Probably pause here. Yeah. No problem. Um, Jessica, any thoughts on giants in your life, or that you saw a story or history or advice or or even something that's bothering you? Anything you want to talk about? Just to pinpoint on what it was said before, like the greatest, I guess for me, for example, my greatest giant will be fa- uh, fear failure. So. That's a big, big thing there. Yeah, sure. Sure. Sure that. I'll tell you one of mine, actually. <laughs> this is so funny. It's, it's just like really weird. I thought about posting about this before, and I, it just seems so weird that I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so I, um, you know, I've been working out. My daughter got me working out three and a half years ago. I've kept going with that. 
super slow progress, you know. Um, but you know, I do a little treadmill and a little a little weightlifting is all it's not nothing super um amazing, but I'm actually afraid every time I lift weights. Seriously. And I do that more than one time a week. And I'm actually afraid of it. And I don't know. I can, and I pray, I have to pray. And I th- I'm afraid because I, I mean, I'm not really sure what it is. It hurts. First of all, it actually hurts a lot. Number one. And I, but I don't really know what it is, but number two is I don't want to mess with it. It's a huge amount of work. Right. And then number three, um, I feel like I'm not, I'm not going to do well. And so that's kind of what Jessica reminded me of is fear of failure because part of my, I think what, and I still do it, but I, I face it like for, at, at the start of every set, it's such an, it's so annoying. I wish I just didn't, you know, didn't even think about it, but I mean, I have tea on music. I'm to like think about it. I'm to do it and I am afraid. It's so weird. It's a weird, but you know what? Some people are afraid of like, freaking spiders i mean you know people have fears so i mean i guess it's just people people have tendencies but that's mine that's one of mine so a fear of failure might be part of mine too jessica i would say can i say something it's interesting when you said that um because um since i started working i'm back at being a floor nurse and boy at my age i'm like exhausted mm. but the only thing that helps me is swimming so i go oh. to the gym twice a week to swim out all the aches and pains wow that's incredible. but my focus isn't my pain mm. my focus isn't my aches and pain my focus is once I'm done doing this thing, I don't really want to do is like, get up, get ready, go to the gym, swim, and then come back. Yeah. My focus is the aftermath of it. Right. Okay. So I think that's what happens with wow. fear. We're stuck on the fear, yeah. but if we put it to the side and hit the goal, you know, like kind of the target, then we bypass all the fear. And, and like today I went swimming. I, that's why I tuned in a little later. Yeah. Yeah. I did not want to go. My goodness. Um, Interesting. So you have a little bit of resistance too. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a a mindset of focusing on, you know, I already see, you know, us conquering the promise land. I already see Goliath's head in my hand. I already see. Interesting. Right. So that kind of moves the fear away. It is all about the mindset. Interesting you say that about fear. That's good. That's really helpful. So what? So what Leslie's doing is she's kind of looking into the reward, you know, side of the equation, which is like you said, it's a mindset thing. Instead of focusing on this is going to really be hard and I'm going to be exhausted. I don't want to do it, especially with swimming because, you know, you have to get in the water and you have to get all ready. It's a different level of readiness, you know, versus I just go upstairs and lift weights with shorts on. No, not a big deal, but you, know, it's a little, you have to go drive there. You have to get ready it's even more work but you're focusing on i'm going to feel good this is really good for me that's great that's a good we talked about the the imagination you know is doing this whatever this task is whatever this obstacle is it's going down this path is that going to project me into the person the uh the way that god is taking me if yes then i need to go down you know and you're trying to think past whatever the current obstacle is. And, and Leslie, for, for, for your comment, one of the things that I think about is because, you know, fear, fear of failure is so prevalent to me, you know, having a small business that's it's almost the same place where it started, you know, nonprofit, things like that, that it's, you know, you're just, it's just always there. But I, I know that there was, there's, there's a group of failures that are in this chapter and it's the people who didn't try the people who refused to even consider the option of going in, you know, and I don't want to be that person. If I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail because the giant beat me up and did what giants do. And that's okay. That's how I want to fail. I don't want to fail because I, I should have looked, I should have lost. 
Let's go figure it out. Really helpful. Cool. So I think I have the next scripture. Um, yes, you do. So Christianity, so we have, you know, so we all recognize we're going to the promised land and we have this giant. It's a real thing. Uh, it's not like we're stupid. We can see there's a giant there. I mean, we have eyes, we have a brain, we know that giant can kill us. Um, but what Christianity offers uh, is a second set of eyes. So I'll read mine. And I know this is such a common verse, but it actually, the reason why I brought it up is it spoke to me last night. In my devotions, this spoke to me. So Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And, you know, I took understanding as legitimate situational awareness, you know, like with my job, you know, big, huge quote that I have to hit as a sales manager, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing yet at this new company, you know, a lot of factors, right? So, but instead of leaning on my own understanding, I should trust in the heart of replacement behavior, right? It's not that I don't think there's a challenge to be had or a giant to be had. It's that I do replacement um, behavior by trusting in the Lord. So trust the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding or on what you see in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So I only bring that up. Maybe it'll help somebody. I know it's super common, but this one is just, you know, it, it helped me yesterday. So um, on the, on the vein of uh, this a similar, but, but more of an illustration of this, Jordan's going to read second Kings uh, six. Let's see. What, what was the reference? We said? Looks like it's six fifteen through 21. Yeah. Uh, so I'll get you there. And this is a nice illustration of a second set of eyes that we have spiritually. Yeah. So just for, we're not going to read the whole chapter again, but the backstory to this is um, the king of, of Aram is, is frustrated because Elisha is, is giving the Israel army basically supernatural insight from in, inside their chamber and they're coming out to to kill elisha so um says next morning and went outside there were troops and horses and chariots everywhere this is his servant oh sir what will we do now the young man cried to elisha don't be afraid elisha told him for there are more on our side than on theirs then elisha prayed oh lord open his eyes and let him see the Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. The Armenian army advanced toward him. Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, please make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness, as Elisha had asked. You're muted, huh? Sorry. Uh, so yeah, good stuff. What's your thoughts on that? What would you uh, what do you take out of that? Is that oftentimes when we're looking at, we can look at the circumstances from the servant's perspective, which is still true. Just like when there's giants, there is an army out there and the army is coming to get us and they outnumber us, you know, and I can choose to look at it from that perspective, you know, but Elisha had the wisdom and he had the insight which we all do um, to then seek God and, and to seek his perspective on it. And God had already taken care of it. He had already surrounded that army. And so as, as a similar perspective is that, you know, whenever these giants come up in our lives and our relationships and business and whatever we're doing, you know, we should look at it and acknowledge the problem. You know, but then invite God's perspective in on it. So, uh, Dustin, remind me if I'm wrong, but uh, King Hezekiah did that uh, when the Babylonians were coming against him. There, and they were, I mean, the army was so vast that he just took the report and just put it before God. God, what do you have to say about this? I'm acknowledging the, the army. I'm acknowledging there's a problem. There's a big problem. And I can't do anything about it. This, 
So I need I need your assistance. You know. Yep. Amen. Dustin, any comments on that? Not really. You haven't called on Paul yet. You know, he's off my uh, yeah. little gallery browser. That's why I'm not doing that. Paul, any thoughts on that? Uh, I should have a point for the previous one. Okay. Um, and uh, <clears throat> and because, you know, giants are, uh, at the end of the day, are, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's like, a, it, they're like a mountain. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, one, no faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. And, and that's, how, that's actually like, like, a, like a decision, like the time that you see, hey, uh, I, I don't feel like uh, I want to do this. And, and, and then you, you, you take the decision. That's like believing that you have a conviction that you you are sure that, that by doing this you make better or that you're gonna uh, be better. So uh, so that's that's another way that 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 we have to take into account to to conquer these giants. Amen. Thank you. Good stuff. Anybody have any comments on? What Paul is talking about? <clears throat> okay, cool. Uh, good stuff. Thanks. Sorry, I expanded my gallery so I can see everybody now. That's that was a good. Sorry, it affected you, but um, I'm glad I know how to fix it now. I figured out how to do it, so that's good. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so Christian editor, so our faith offers a second set of eyes. Um, one of the things that Jordan said after he read that passage was that, you know, we should seek God's perspective. And that is in the story because Elijah, is it Elijah or Elisha? Elisha. 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 What he said is he prayed, oh Lord, open his eyes. So you do have to engage God. God might just show you. I mean, I sometimes I've had, in fact, during my job search, I had one thing where I didn't even talk to him yet. I'll just go into the restroom and the Lord spoke to me before I had a chance to pray about it, which is funny, but I had intended to pray about it. Um, and he said, you know, don't go down to Egypt. Don't take this job. Basically don't settle, you know, type thing. And I was like, okay, well, there you go. Um, but yeah, but normally you do pray and that's what the model, that's what we see here. Uh, and in Proverbs three, five and six, you know, if you're going to trust in the Lord with all your heart, um, you may just sit there and trust him in your heart, but you may, that may also be in the form of a prayer, you know? Um, I mean, at least for me, it has to be. Can I, mean, I pose a, can I pose a question? Rock on. Um, so I know like for me, sometimes like when I think about this and I try to relate it to business and things like that mm -hmm. is why, why, why didn't God tell me it's going to be so difficult? You know, why, why would he not tell me that there would be giants immediately whenever I started trying to run a nonprofit or, or trying to start my own business? Why wouldn't he tell me, you know, and, and, you know, relate it to yourself, you know, why, or relate it back to the passage. Why, why didn't God say, go into the promised land, by the way, there's giants in there. You know, what, are, what are you guys Thoughts on Paul, that. Paul, why would he not tell you that the house is going to take you 16 months to sell or, or whatever problem, you know, you want to think about, why wouldn't God tell you that it's going to be so difficult? And, and usually, I mean, often, and it, it usually this happens after the fact, because it, it takes a while for you to realize or to even sometimes is, 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 is hard to, to trust i mean i know you we always have to trust god and everything but it's 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 a, it's something that we have to go by faith and 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 like i said is is the evidence of things unseen and um and you only realize after the fact that 
it was the perfect timing actually. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So maybe what we have to think now, uh, and I know it's easier said than done, is to think, okay, what if this is, I'm, I'm going through all these uh, hurd uh, hurdles and, and, and these giants that I have to overcome, what if it, because it's, 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 God wants me to go through them and, 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 and maybe we can find it's in, in a way some peace mm -hmm. in God. Good. Well, this, have... the, the, the... Oh, go ahead, Dustin. Well, that's one perspective, but the, the, to answer your specific uh, question, Jordan, like why didn't God uh, tell me that, that there are giants once I'm going to be doing my nonprofit? Is like, well, because you might have not started your nonprofit to start with. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and I, I've been kind of many times in my life when I started something, not realizing how hard it would be. Then it became like very hard, uh, but even though it became very hard, I learned something important along the way that I didn't even intend to learn. Mm -hmm. So like we had a couple of projects uh, at war, where it's like, like to literally waste it. We, we, we were just like going in one direction and then we came to the complete wall. And I'm now looking at back at those projects is like, well, I should have had, I, I should have known better and didn't even start. And then I realized that during this kind of two week project, we learned something that's not was related to the project that was actually a byproduct that mm -hmm. we, would, we would have never learned if we knew that the project would be hard, if we knew it would be a waste of time, we would have never started it and we would have never learned something that was kind of essential along this path. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Dennis, that if, if in the beginning God told us how hard it was going to be, then we wouldn't, we wouldn't go. And it's even scriptural. It, uh, I'm trying to find the verse right now. It's in Exodus, but it says God took them the long way around because they weren't ready to fight the battle. And if we would have gone, if I would have taken them the short way, they would have turned around and went right back to Egypt. And so he doesn't tell us that. And I know for me, I'm going to raise my hand to the question I'm about to ask, but how many times have, have you broached a situation in business, in relationship, in whatever, and you said, this is too difficult, this can't be God? Where you said, this, this, there's no way God would put me here. And there's, that's not scriptural at all. That's not scriptural at all. Praise God. And so, I, I mean, All that's a new perspective. Insights. Every single yeah. nugget you guys have been giving has been helping me, by the way. Yeah. It's a new perspective shift for me to realize that. But Dustin, go ahead. Yeah, to piggyback on that, um, you know, uh, I, I believe it's in Proverbs, but talking about how, you know, the, the smelting process, right? God is so much more interested in us than the problem. He's interested about, Hmm. who we become, who we rise up to be, right? The, the smelting process is used to pull out impurities. Dennis, you're talking about a process that you went through that, you know, you came up and you, there was no way that you would have come up with that idea had you not gone, gone through that process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's through that process, God is making us who he wants us to be. So mm -hmm. we should truly welcome these giants because – if, if we didn't go through those giants, we wouldn't become who God truly wants us to be. So we should truly welcome those. I wanted to say, I agree with that. So, so oh, wholeheartedly. Mm. Um, I think when Jordan was saying that he told the Israelites, well, no, when God took the Israelites through another route, which took longer. Yeah, I, yeah, they weren't ready. But when they were going to go and conquer the promised land, they were ready. They were ready because God wouldn't have done that otherwise, right? He wouldn't have said, go and do it. Mm. But I think that's when people start getting weeded out. Who's going to do it and who is not? That's why the valiant warriors, that's why not everyone, I wish everyone could, you know, be of a mindset of saying, okay, let's do this. Let's not fear, but we're not all that. And then we go through seasons, right? But yeah, I believe that they were definitely ready, but fear 
and the lack of faith, mm. um, you know, hit in. And what in the passage that you were reading, I think it was in Numbers, you mentioned mm. the Amalekites. And uh, when COVID hit, I started uh, reading about the uh, Exodus and the Amalekites came out. And I'm like, why are these Amalekites coming out? You know, the first people that Moses fought with and the first uh, soldier that was there was, jo uh, that's the first time he made his grand appearance with Joshua, right? I think it was in Exodus 17, but the Amalekites came out again. So I decided to study who the Amalekites were and what that really meant. And one of the meanings of the Amalekites is spiritual confusion. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we do battle all of these things, and anyway, I just wanted to say that I think they were ready, but not everyone believed that they were ready. Mm. Wow. Because the Lord gives us a choice. Mm. Well, I told my wife uh, last night that when we go, I think it was my wife. Anyway, I was like, you know, the reason why we go through this situation is that when the next thing comes, we can remember what God did in the prior way. Can the new and the Psalms talk about that a lot. Where actually, one of the Psalms that I'm in right now, I think it's Psalm 78 in my uh, Bible in a year program. It's actually such a large Psalm, they've chunked it into like three days. But um, it talks about how, in spite of the fact that Israel had seen all these miracles, they didn't trust God and they did not go and, and do what they were supposed to do. And God judged them for that, you know. So I think. To Leslie's point, you know, sometimes I think we're ready, but we don't trust God. That's tough to hear, though. It also means, though, if you evaluate, okay, let's unpack that for a second. So I'll take the floor for just a second. So let's think about the feelings that happen. So Jeanette is building a business right now, right? So there's feelings though, that come against, right? They're like doubt. Or like, well, I'm not sure what to do or, you know, but God has me in this situation. He's given me this opportunity. Friends keep telling me to make these different products. I've, I've been able to figure out everything so far, but, but this next thing seems big or whatever, you know what, whatever it may be. And instead of us listening to those feelings of doubt, you know, I think it's like we, we, we say that prayer we say, God, open my eyes, you know? Because it's okay to be weak in the moment when you're faced on that, you know, when you're facing the precip precipice of that opportunity or the threshold of that opportunity. I think everybody has those feelings, but it's like the next choice is that habit that we have to make of praying and asking God for strength and for courage. So I just think that's, I mean, that's what I do uh, a lot of times, but you know, the quicker I can remember to do that, the quicker I'll you know, cross over that threshold. Cause I just, I think I just want to kind of give all of you guys the feeling that you're, it's okay. Like it's not a sin to have the doubt. It's not a sin to have the feeling or that thrashing about that we have. That's a normal part of the, the human experience, right? It's just that we now have an opportunity to partner with God that in that moment and, and cry out to him and ask for help. Yeah, David does that in the Psalms a lot, hmm. you know, uh, I noticed that it, it really used, Psalms used to bug me because it was like, David, can you pick an emotion and just stick with it? Are you mad at God in the situation or is he on your team? You know, just, but it, it was him wrestling with it. It's him saying, God, this is the way I feel and it's uncomfortable and this, that, and the other, but, and then you'd see a perspective shift, but I invite you in and this is who you are. And I'm telling you. And he, you can almost see him declaring over the situation, you know? And so he's being real, God. God, it feels like I'm all alone. It feels like my enemies are kicking my butt. It feels like you forgot about me. But let me go back. Let me go back and remember what your word says. Let me go back and pull up. Let me get a friend in here and see what they have to say. That's our point number three, Yeah. you know? And, and let's go back and see what you have to say about this, you know? Mm. Yep, that's great. Good stuff. 
Jeanetta, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing good in you. Good. good Sorry I'm you. late. I'm taking oh, classes yeah. for a work from home job. Oh, so it's from good. three to seven. Amen. You're okay. It was good to see you the other day at church. Thanks for saying hey. <laughs> he was looking like, who is you? <laughs> <laughs> Cool. I remember you about your beard. So <laughs> yeah, you can't miss Jordan. It's memorable. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Very cool. <laughs> well, it's a blessing. You know, I think, you know, whether it's with your business or with anybody else's business or family or job, you know, I think we do have these moments where something looks like a giant, you know, and what we've been saying on this, on this round table today is that, you know, just because it's a giant doesn't mean it's it's a necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it, it could actually just be a big opportunity and not just a big problem. So that's kind of what we've been kind of roundtabling. Um, Jessica, how um, how do you feel about some of this these topics? Um, any any thoughts about this? Any of it of it speaking to you, or any any thoughts to 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 bring? Okay, I mean, I mean. I feel, I know you started talking about how you have the fear mm. when you start a business then. It's like, I don't know, it's like one part you believe be, believe that you can do it, but then you got other people that's reaching out like, hey, can you do this for me? Mm -hmm. And though you've never done it before, there'd be like a little push or yeah. I say, let's be confirmation from God letting you know like, okay, mm. you need to keep going. Don't give up now. Wow, that is so good. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to, talk to that because i have i post a lot on linkedin kind of like for there's a, a reason for that um i'm kind of building a side business in addition to my job with regard to job search coaching and so i'm purposely posting content about that to kind of like get that you know it's one way of getting it going it's just like one thing <laughs> and i'm having like some pretty low pretty low engagement from that and i keep and i keep asking god like you know, should I not be doing this? And then I will have somebody reach out to me. I've had probably two people reach out to me in the last, you know, seven days and say, you know, keep going. This is helpful. You know, appreciate it. You know, blah, blah, blah. And so it's like you said, Janetta, I mean, people, you know, God can use people and can, and you're actually, you're jumping into, I actually might put your comments under this next point because it's actually perfect. Um, so I'm actually going to move those because God can use our friends or mentor relationships or family to also speak encouragement like that. Yes, I agree. And it's like, he give you a vision to do something. Then it's like, I guess a part of us be scared of rejection. So we don't do it like sure. right on, right at the time that he give us the vision. So then it comes back again. So mm on the second time or the third time whichever time it comes you know like you got to go on yeah. and do it because he won't uh, keep giving you the right that's good so the the message is okay that's such a key guys and actually <laughs> i always feel like these groups are like in tailor fit to like encourage brian sometimes um but that really <laughs> helped me a lot because you know god doesn't you know god shouldn't have to provide more than two or three you know encouragements to validate a direction you know what i mean uh and so that's a good so i i kind of put down remember those um times you are validated um that's good that was a good word jessica uh anything uh that you'd like to add to this no thoughts here okay cool all good um, and by the way, at the end, we're going to pray uh, for, we will absolutely tackle some giants. Yes. And uh, I'm really excited to, to dig into that. But Jordan, um, what, how has, how have friends helped you or mentors or, um, you know, how, how can we think about this? I mean, the iron sharpens iron. We didn't want to read it because we talk about it literally every other gateway group, iron sharpens <laughs> iron, right? It's so good, but we've just covered it a lot. And we didn't go take the time to find another scripture. So remember, Iron Sharp is on. Um, but Jordan, maybe give us a couple of your thoughts around this one as well. Yeah, uh, the thoughts that I had mentioned earlier is that, yes, friends can offer a perspective, you know, but let's realize that 
10 pe- or 12 people went in, 10 people had a, had one perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. And so we got, you got to weigh the perspective yeah, of, you know, okay. And what are the, what's coming at me? Are these people, um, is their perspective, is it in line with what God had confirmed to me? Is it in line with what scripture is telling me? Um, yeah. I mean, that's the biggest thing for me is yeah. that, you know, I want to go to scripture. I want to know what scripture has to tell me. And then whenever I'm speaking with somebody else is what they're sharing with me. Is it in line with what scripture has been telling me? You know, because oftentimes I'm reading through the scripture and, you know, I'm asking God about my family and I'm asking him about business and God, what you're telling me in scripture doesn't align with what I see, but I believe what you're telling me and I'm going, I'm following you, but you know, you want to go get some encouragement. You want to go get some advice or some, you know, a different, a different set of eyes. And if that different set of eyes contradicts the word, then we need to weigh that. Um, I'm, I know that there's a proverb on that about um, the counsel of, of the wise. Um, yeah. And it's, uh, I mean, one of them that's in favor of this is the in a multi, uh, yeah, multi to do counsel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's in favor. Also, page advice. So there's a lot of advice seeking kind of in there now that we can yeah. both start remembering those scriptures. Yeah. Uh, but yet weigh the advice. And, and, you know, a good example, if you guys might remember uh, when Solomon passed away and gave the throne or, you know, Rehoboam, his son inherited the throne, Rehoboam's very first business decision involved the level of um, pressure and taxation and, and um, harshness that he would or would not put on the kingdom. And he took the advice of his kind of young rebels versus kind of the older, wiser crew that had been around his, you know, his dad, Solomon, and ended up splitting the kingdom because he took bad advice from a bunch of roughnecks. You yes. know? So yeah, the wing, the advice is good. Um, but, you know, you have to go get advice to weigh it. So de- definitely seek counsel, you know. Yeah, I think there's, um, is it Ecclesiastes where it talks about the, the threefold cord? So, I mean, obviously we, we know yeah. that. I mean, that's why we're here in this group. We would, totally. you know, we're looking to have somebody in our corner. We're looking to receive some wisdom, some insights, some knowledge, something that's going to be an encouragement for us. That's why we're here. And, you know, mm-hmm. um, and so, I mean, Proverbs talks about it. The, a man that walks alone is unwise. You know, when you're, when you're by yourself, you know, the enemy picks you off, you know, and so you, you got to get that perspective, especially when you're battling things that look like giants. Yeah. Hey, by the way, it's, it's um, Jordan. I'm sure you would go along with this yeah. strongly as well, but literally if you guys come to this group and you have a burning topic, it does not have to be business. It can be. Um, but if you need to, you need to share it is literally the place. This is the place to be. Yeah. Everybody yeah. in the group really does have a, such a loving spirit. Let me tell you what, I mean, I was out of a job for eight and a half months and these guys, uh, guys and gals were just with me 24 seven. You know what I mean? Um, checking in on me and on these calls where I was sometimes very uh, in a tough spot you know, uh, and, and they would, they would share with me. And, you know, I remember some specific words that I got actually. So please feel free to bring, you know, we're pulling in a lot of biblical stories and a lot of scripture and that's all great stuff, but it is after all. Lesson. So just please feel free to be very, just literally interrupt is what I'm asking. Uh, what else would you guys offer uh, from the friend's perspective? What else would you guys say? on this side of it facing giants you know giant opportunities or giant problems or both um and then the friends angle friends or counselors i was going to say i think it's real important to um have um equally yoked friends Hmm. um because um i'm remembering david when he went out to take his brother some food they were discouraging him, right, to fight. And you think you trust uh, the people that you're closest with or you live with, right? 
um, you know, and also then we see the friend of Jesus, which Judas was considered in that group as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, you know, I think uh, friends, you need the close friends, but you also have to be aware. And it, we can say friends as a person, but it can also be an opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, it can also be a situation, a, a door that we think is opening, but it really is meant for evil, you know, just stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's, it's almost like it has to be balanced so right and you have to have discernment. So you have to be grounded on the word of God. You have to walk with the Lord. Mm. Um, you know, I think that's why Joshua was chosen to, you know, grab that baton mm. and, you know, because he was really grounded in the Lord and in the leadership, you know. Mm -hmm. So good. Who else wants to share something on this uh, side of the, or, or prior areas, by the way, is fine. And we'll send out the notes and everything. Yeah, I would say um, from a friendship perspective, um, you know, always look to do things for your friends that uh, they couldn't necessarily pay you back for, um, you know, through uh, uh, law or power, water. I think it was four days. Mm. And I had a, had a friend of ours that um, before we even asked, uh, went ahead and invited us over mm. uh, to their home. And that really touched me because there's, mm. there's no way that I could truly pay somebody back for that. Um, there's, there's not going to be uh, a situation where I feel like I could, I could be even with that person. And so that really touched my heart. And I, I think we need to, to concentrate a lot of times in business to do things that people can't necessarily pay for. Hmm. Um, that doesn't have so much a uh, uh, monetary value, but it has a spiritual value. Such a good challenge. If yeah. you think about it, you know, because then that's challenging all of us to have on our radar, you know, other people, you know, that we can, that we can help. So that's a really nice flip side of it. It's a great other side of the coin. It's not just what, what advice can we take from friends, but you know, what advice and counsel can we give encouragement, finances, shelter, whatever, be on the radar, you know, have that on the radar. That's good. Thank you. Um, one thing it's not in the, it's not in the plan, but I think, for me, a, a last point would would be good, and it, we've touched on it already. But just to officially, let's roundtable a little bit about what does that look like when you're when you are praying and facing a giant with prayer and with leaning on God. You know, not everybody has to share, but anybody who would like to share, uh, we kind of need a title though. Facing uh, maybe just like facing the giant with prayer and God's help. I don't know. It doesn't matter, but a little, well, this is, <laughs> this is a title. So that's fine. But why don't we just kind of end on that note and then we'll literally go do it in prayer, which is cool. Um, but what do you guys, you know, how, what does your process look like in terms of you've got that stress, you've got that anxiety, you, you, you know, sometimes you forget to pray about it. I'm sure. But when you do go pray about it and seek God's help, what does that look like? You can either tell a story or your process, whatever you want to share. I focus on uh, what's my part. You know, Pastor Robert talks about it a lot. Um, it's been a while since he spent a, a sermon or, or a series on it. But there's always two parts. There's, there's the natural part, which is our responsibility. And then there's the supernatural, and that's God's responsibility. If I'm trying to do the supernatural, then the natural is not getting done, and, and I'm effectively doing God's job. And so he's not involved. And so I have to find out, I have to remind myself that it's not my job to do the supernatural. It's my job to do the natural. You know, and whatever, whatever that looks like and whether, I mean, whether that's okay, God, I'm going to, I'm going to send my emails. I'm going to send yep. my messages. Yep. I'm going to do the little stuff 
over yep. again today, over again, again today, I'm going to do exactly what you're putting on my heart. The strategy that you're showing me, I'm doing again today because that's the natural part. If I don't do the natural, then he can't do the supernatural. And so I just focus on that and give him the freedom to do the supernatural. It's good. It's great. Very powerful, it's, Jordan. I like it. It's great. All right, Paul, I'm tagging you. No, I mean, that's uh, pretty much Jordan summed, summed it up. So, uh, I mean, because it's, it's like, uh, I mean, what else, what else can happen? I mean, it's just, I mean, you do your part and God does his, I mean, pretty much unless it's not i mean and probably i mean let me just rephrase this unless it's not god's will uh sure. i mean it was probably go back to like okay god did actually doing this part maybe the, that's the only re the the only the only reason that i think they wouldn't work mm -hmm. And I'm going to piggyback on that as well. Um, I would say, you know, what's part, who do I need to become? You know, I, I think about being a parent when, you know, my, having my first kid, I had no idea what I was doing. Hmm. But who did I have to become in that process? I had to become a father. Right. There's that there's those, those events that happen that. Once again, the Lord is much more interested in who we become. Mm -hmm. So what is our part? Who do we need to become? Yeah. Good. And part of it is if, if you didn't trust God, then you might be too afraid to have kids, you know. So it's like there's a little bit of faith even in the becoming, you know, it's like I actually never thought I would. I never thought I was a good candidate for kids because of how I was raised, you know? And so I, I never pictured myself as a dad and, and yet I am, you know, I've got two daughters and it's an absolute joy and I didn't mess them up too much. So part of it is that you trust God to become what you need to become as well. Cool. Um, what, who um, else would like to talk about their process? Yeah. I always, I always have to remind myself that it is God's will ultimately. Okay. And then I always ask for understanding yeah. because the understanding is not always there. So it's important to understand the process that you're going through, the challenges that you're going through so that you can overcome it. Mm -hmm. That's good, Jessica. And then, good. Um, Janetta, when you, you know, when you're facing a giant, um, how do you get God involved? Have, has there been some times you remember really leaning on him? What did that look like? Did you call me? Yep. Yep. Okay. Could you give me a second? I'm taking the groceries upstairs. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. I'll, I'll come back to you. Um, Dennis, what does that look like? I mean, you had to trust God for a long time with your job search, but I'm sure you've had other challenges in life where you've had to trust God. What, what did that look like with prayer and God's help? Uh, take a first step. So at least kind of in my perspective, the, the biggest challenge is that you are looking at kind of some goal or a giant and like, oh, well, okay, I cannot walk two miles. I, I don't know what's going to happen kind of midway, mm -hmm. but there is no need to, to kind of walk two miles. Uh, uh, you have to start with the first step. And so sometimes even if you don't know what the first step is, kind of sit down and ask yourself some basic questions like what does a good look like? What, what, what exactly are we trying to accomplish? Like read the instructions. Mm -hmm. uh, at least in, in my human nature, once you start going on this road, even though your first 
few steps might not be absolutely productive since you kind of start start getting inertia then the next step becomes easier and easier and mm. then be, before you know it you actually reach reach a destination that seems that seemed unreachable before yeah 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 sometimes we get stuck because we can't we're paralyzed so we can't start totally agree uh, yeah, we, we, we are paralyzed okay. because we, we don't know like what, what all the steps look like, but yeah. that, that, that that's, that's typically not necessary. I mean. Wow. But it's typically not necessary to know the end in order to get started. Yep. No, it's a good point. Great point. Leslie, what's it look like when you're facing a giant, uh, you know, in any area of life? It's just because it's a business group doesn't mean it has to be the, you know, that has to be the answer. But what does it look like when maybe you have gotten God involved in prayer and trusting him and you didn't lean on your own understanding? Um, I think as the years went by, that has evolved for me. So my take now is I'm and they definitely you know get people to surround me that can encourage me and I pray I pray I pray I love it when I'm home alone sometimes because it's like I just yell out and pray and I kind of see what I would want the future to look like and using the word of God, like the promises of God. And I hold him to it. You know, I tell him, you know, Lord, you know, during my 11 months of unemployment, mm -hmm. um, the unemployment was not enough for, uh, to cover everything. So I had to dip into my savings yeah. and my family, they were a little worried for me, you know, you know, I had to support myself and my son and, you know, they were kind of scared. And my mom's like, Oh, come, come live with us, you know? leave everything, put things in storage. Hmm. And I said, mom, if I do that, I'm going to be trusting in you and not in the Lord. So I kind of have that take, but hmm. before I didn't have that take, I mean, you know, I'm in my fifties now, so I have learned <laughs> because I know what that the opposite looks like and I don't like it. So I tend not to go there in my mind. Hmm. And I think it really is all about the mind where we're standing, what we believe in, and are we willing to trust? And it is trust, you know? So for me, I mean, I don't know. It's just, um, mm -hmm. I've learned to become the way I am and I still want to go through changes. I still want to grow. Um, you know, I don't want to, I was uh, talking to someone, oh, I think it was my son yesterday about fear. I said, you know, I said, I heard this from church about fear, like the acronym, um, false evidence appearing real. And I know that, that they've mm. preached that at church too, I said. And um, that's one of the things that I don't allow to get into my mind because once it gets in here, it easily drops, you know, a few inches down into my heart and I'm done. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think it's yeah, just yeah. Uh, go forward, you know, <laughs> I don't know. So good. Yeah, you know, so I don't, Oh, I doubt I have anything original here, but from my standpoint, um, you know, I definitely try to seek the Lord every day, try to have my time with him because um, I need him. And I, I have this perspective that God is my business partner and then I'm in business with my father. And so I want to talk to him about my business questions and my business problems. Uh, and I pray for my pray like crazy for my daughters. I just break heaven for them every day um and my wife too but she's solidly on track um but my kids i just cover them because i i need shields and i need armor and i need inspiration and i need burning bushes for my daughters just so that they will encounter god um but from a business perspective and also from my own heart and i'm very watchful uh of my own heart because i i can easily drift i have a very immoral past i can easily you know, I've been married for 20 years, so I'm, in, I'm stable, but I mean, I, I can, I can see where that went, you know, before I got married, I can see. And so I, I pray for my own heart and I just, so I, for me, I'm just praying for the topics that are, I'm not very strategic in prayer. 
I'm not all that strategic in prayer. i kind of pray for what's going on. Okay. Um, and then just worship, just, uh, just a lot of, um, well, my daughter's better about worship. I'm probably better about Thanksgiving. She actually has music on and worships. Um, I'm more just thanking him and meditating and just sitting with him more. Um, but I love to get God involved in my stuff. And I will say that it is a mind, like a couple of you guys have said mindset. And I just find that in prayer, I'll have a, a little different mindset shift, you know, and I'll give you an example. So the last few days I've had some challenges that are, um, you know, just about attaining these giant software sales numbers. And, um, and, you know, it's kind of like what Dennis said about, you know, just getting started. And so I have felt, because, I believe it's because I've prayed at night a lot that the next day during work, I will remember it's my job to take the steps and to do the work and God will bless it. But it's like Jordan said, if I don't, I think it was Jordan, uh, but if I don't do the work, you know, then God, you know, he, he relies on me to do my part, even though I may doubt myself, but I trust God. So I really, for me, I pray fairly reactively. Um, it's not very proactive. I pray for what's going on. Although for my daughters, I would say that's very proactive every day. Uh, yeah, I forget it's carrying me through the challenging times and I, and I, um, you know, overcome X, Y, Z problem, even though like Dennis said, I don't know what's down two miles down the road, but through prayer and laying at God's feet, like last night I said to him specifically, like, okay, these are the four requests. I'm laying them at your feet. And then I did to, to the point of all of you today, I did go work on those things at work. I did focus a lot on those and I made progress, but we're not out of the woods yet, you know, but again, that's where I, you have to leave it at God's feet. So I think that act of prayer is critical in our process. Uh, but I think all of you have added so much incredible insights tonight. So thank you. Can I read a scripture? Yeah. Knock it out. Before we get into prayer. Yeah. So I put it in, I put it in the chat, but it's a, uh, maybe a little, if you're on your phone, it may be a little big to pull up, but it's Hebrews 12, um, six to eight. It says, my child, don't underestimate the value of the discipline and training of the Lord God or get depressed when he has to correct you for the Lord's training of your life is the evidence of his faithful love. And when he draws you to himself, it's, it proves you are his delightful child. Fully embrace God's correction as part of your training, for he's doing what any loving father does for his children. For who has ever heard of a child who has ever had to be corrected? We all should welcome God's discipline as the validation of authentic sonship. For if we have never once endured his correction, it only proves we are strangers and not sons. Hmm. It really spoke to me, you know, and, you know, the struggle and, and getting a business further down the road, getting a nonprofit further down the road that, you know, God, why is this giant here? Why isn't leaving, you know, and it's according to this scripture from what his word says, it's, it's proof that he's trying to show me that I'm his son. He's trying to, to, Tell me how much he loves me by allowing me to go through difficulties to rely on him because the difficulties pushing me to him. Why would he take that out of my way? He's wow. trying. He's courting me. He's drawing me closer to him. He's using this obstacle as a way to draw me closer to him. And if I can see it as that, then I just run to him. It's amazing. That's what I'm going to pray over us tonight, by the way. Man. Thank you. Awesome. Well, anybody have any final comments? Dennis, you're off in mute. Do you have something to add? Uh, no, not really. Okay. I kind of felt like you did. Well, I, I yeah, I did, but I, I think it, it was kind of off topic. So. Okay. 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 Um, so, yeah, let's pray for everybody. And um, 